right, so we are continuing in our series with um, looking at counters that ordinary men and women have with Jesus. And today we're going to be in Luke chapter 10, uh, towards the end of chapter 10, verses 38 to 42. Um, and so remember, if just recap, kind of we've already looked at kind of Jesus' first miracle that took place when he instructed a servant to go and get some water who bravely did that and gave that water to the master of ceremonies who drank that water, but somewhere in between him entering his mouth or the cup coming to his hand, that water turned recklessly into wine. We saw about Levi, who was far away from God, who was separated from his people because of the, the occupation that he had. And we saw that he, he met Jesus and instantly his life was transformed so much that he decided to drop everything and follow Jesus and want everyone else to follow him too. So he invites all his friends, everyone he knows, to come and meet with Jesus. We met some Pharisees who sadly missed what Jesus was doing right in front of them because they were too concerned that Jesus was doing things the wrong way, wasn't doing things the way that he wanted them, they wanted them to be done. And today, in chapter 10 of Luke, we're going to be looking at two ladies, Mary and Martha, and we're going to see how they interacted um, with, with Jesus. So um, let's, well, let's read these verses and get into it. So, there we go, it says, As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. And we're going to just stop it there for a second. I'm going to pray. So Lord Jesus, I, I thank you for meeting with us this morning. God, I thank you for reminding us of how great you are. God, I want to thank you that for, um, for that word, for that prayer brought by Isaac. Lord Jesus, I thank you, God, that Jesus, in your scripture, you describe um, the sea, the ocean, as chaos, as scary. And that's how life can be. But you bring calm. Genesis, in the beginning of Genesis, Genesis 1, you divide, you bring order to the sea, you bring order to the chaos. Lord God, you bring peace. Lord God, and I thank you that you are the one who brings peace to our chaos. God, you are the one who brings peace and calm to our fears. Lord God, and I pray for us, Lord God, this morning that you would, you would help us, Lord God, maybe change some things we're doing, make good decisions, whatever, Lord God, that we'd be able to um, prioritise good things, Lord God, learn to sacrifice other things, intentionally go after other things that you want us to go after, Lord Jesus, that, that we might learn from what we've already been brought this morning, but we also would learn from uh, Mary and Martha and be able to apply what you say to them to our lives this morning. Amen. Amen. Right, so... Mary and Martha, okay, these are famous women in the Gospels, these are, these are, I don't know whether this is kind of Jesus' first encounter with them, or whether that he's met them before, um, we don't know, but you get, kind of get a sense, especially by the end of the Gospels, that these women are really, really close friends with Jesus. You know, this is the sort of house where after, you know, Jesus has been traveling around, he's been preaching, he's been teaching people, he's been doing all this kind of stuff, healing people. And, and, and Mary and Martha's place is a place where he can find rest, where he can just relax, where he can recharge. And, you know, this is, you read, read later on in the Gospels, they have a brother named Lazarus. And remember, Lazarus dies and Jesus comes to him. And actually, Lazarus, he, hearing that Lazarus is dead, he cries. Jesus cries, even though Jesus knows, you know, in a few moments he's going to call him out of the tomb and he's going to be all right again. But Jesus cries because he loves this family so, so much. So this is who these guys are. These are really, really close friends to Jesus. And he, he, he's obviously out. Remember last time, um, he, he's, we, we read how he's out and about all over the place and all these crowds are following him from all these villages and towns. He's sending his disciples into towns and villages and they're, they're bringing crowds back with them after they've healed people and preached this, the good news. And, and, and Jesus comes to this town and Martha's like, come to my place. Come and rest at my place. You look tired, you look hungry. 
Why don't you come, come and rest, come and be with me, come and be at my place. And so he comes, he comes, and Martha, she's a doer. She wants to make sure, you know, she's like, I've got Jesus coming. I don't know what you'd be like if physically Jesus was coming to your house. But Martha's like, Jesus is coming to my house. Everything needs to be perfect. Okay, so, so she, she is there, okay? She has got her shopping list. She is off to the market to buy the, the best fish that's been caught that morning. She's after freshly picked fruit and veg. You know, she, she's, she's coming home and she's scrubbing the toilets. She's, she's hoovering before anyone quickly comes in the house. She's, you know, she's, clean, she's making the bed. She's making everything as perfect as it possibly can be. And I don't know about you, when you've got like a job list to do, whether it's, whether it's just things to do around the home, whether it's things that need to get done by a certain date, or whether it's just you know, your day at work, and you know, you've got an X amount of hours to get this amount done. And in those circumstances, the clock is rarely your friend, is it? You know, the clock is counting down. You've got so many, you know, I, I used to get this, you know, when, when I was working in people's homes, and, and four o'clock is coming, and I'm thinking, I've got so much more work to do, then I've got, then, then the, 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 the time left is going to allow me to do. And sometimes, sometimes I'd, sometimes I'd be like, I'd be okay with that, and I can't just deal with that and be all right. And sometimes, as the time gets closer and closer and closer, you kind of feel yourself getting more stressed and more irate and more kind of less able to actually do anything. You become less and less productive, even though you have more and more stuff to do. And you get more panicking, and then, and this is where Martha's at. She's, she's given herself so much to do as she's cleaning, as she's hoovering, as she's, as she's cooking, as she's providing everyone with teas and, and drinks as they're, they're arriving through the door. She's given herself so much to do. She's realizing tea's going to get not being ready in time. The rooms aren't going to be ready in time. And, and then, as I'm sure any of you who've been in this situation can appreciate, as she's doing this, as she's getting more panicked, more irate, more, more realising that she's not able to do everything she wants to do when she wants to do it, she then sees her sister. And I don't know if you've ever seen someone who you feel like they should be helping you. She sees her sister and not only is she not helping her, she's sat yeah, having a nice time. You know, Martha's going in there, anyone want drinks? What do people want? And Mary's going, oh, I'll have a tea please. No, 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 Mary, you're meant to be, you know, in her mother's mind, she, you know, Mary, you know, you're meant to be coming and taking the drinks order. You can make the teas while I get on with dinner. But you see, Mary, see, um, she's, she's started talking to Jesus. Jesus obviously come in the house, and he, he's, I can imagine, you know, Jesus, he, he's, he's a storyteller. He loves to tell stories. And he's there probably, you know, he's, he's not necessarily preaching at them, but he's just telling them stories. You know, I, 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 when I, when I was doing leadership training, um, uh, I, I, we had uh, one of my favourite times away was a time we did church history, and I love church history anyway. I love history, but um, we had this guy doing it called Ray Lowe, who's who was an old guy, and honestly, the teaching was great. But what was better for me was the break times and lunch times, because where other people might go out or whatever. Ray just kind of sat down in the middle of people and just started sharing stories about stuff he'd seen. And it was just brilliant. I love that more than his, his actual teaching. It was just to hear his stories. And I can imagine it's probably something like that for, 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 for Mary and for the guys in that room. See, obviously Jesus wasn't, you know, he wasn't an old man. He was in his 30s. But he's, he's got so many stories to tell. I can imagine, you know, as he's there, he's just sat down. He's saying, you know, do you know what happened the other day? You know, I was talking in a room just like this. And then suddenly the roof started coming down. And then, then this, this man was being lowered down. And, and do you know what? There were some people here who didn't really like the fact that this guy was coming in here. They didn't like what I was saying. So do you know what? I thought, I'm going to heal this guy. And I'm going to heal him. And I'm going to tell him that he's forgiven. And do you know That didn't go down well. But it was true. He was forgiven. And he did get healed. And do you know what? The other day, uh, there were so many people around. And they were all hungry. And they were starving. And I wanted to see what my disciples, what these guys were going to do. And do you know what? They freaked out completely. So I, so, so I, st I stepped up and I, I, I but this, and this boy came forward. I mean, this boy had amazing faith and he just gave me his, his lunch. And so I prayed over it and, and the father, he made this small lunch for thousands of people. And he's there just telling story after story after story. And Mary's just drinking it in until Martha, Martha says, you know, Martha pops up and says, tell her to help me, Jesus, interrupts this scene. And Jesus is like, obviously he can see that she's upset, that she's 
stressed. And Jesus goes, Martha, Martha. And the Lord answered, You're, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken from her. He's like, calm down, Martha. Calm down. Okay, and what we're gonna, what we're gonna see, actually, as we um, unpack this story is that Jesus doesn't tell her that it's wrong to cook, or it's wrong to clean, or it's wrong to, to, be, to, have, to try and do, do her best in hospitality. It, she, she, he doesn't tell her that. What actually he starts to challenge her in is her priorities. You see, because it, it says in the first few verses, it says that there was a lot to be done. And then Jesus comes, actually, and says, actually, there's, there's not that much to be done. You know, lower your expectations. Lower, your, low, lower, lower what, what you expect to happen in this moment. And he, he comes to her, and he's, he's basically saying, you know, what are your priorities? What are your priorities, Martha? You see, we all have the same amount of hours in the day, don't we? How many hours do we have in a day? 24. 24, except for two times a year. We have 23 and 25, but rest of that, it's 24 hours, and we all have 24 hours in, I think next, next week we've got 23, haven't we? Next Sunday. Is that, is that, is that Sunday? Yeah. 25. 25. Oh, it's, it's the good one. Not the bad, it's the good one. Okay. All right, so yeah. Bad one. Bad one. Oh, no, the clock's going back. Pull back. Pull back. There we go. Yeah, pull back. Yeah, we got an extra hour. Extra hour. <laughs> it doesn't mean you have to get up to be honest it means nothing if you've got small kids they still get up early anyway but anyway so we all got anyway the rest of the year except for the last sunday in october and the last sunday in march we it's 24 hours in a day that was needlessly complicated um i could have just said 24 hours um but um, <laughs> where am I? Um, okay, and what, what this story is telling us is actually that ultimately that what are our priorities for those hours, for those 24 hours of our day, for those seven days of the week, for those 52 weeks of the year, you know, we all have the same amount of hours, yet granted our energy levels, depending on um, where, what stage of life we're at or what we've been given, you know, will vary. But we all have the same amount of, of hours. And what are we going to prioritise with those hour, hours? And you see, if you've been in church for any length of time at all, you would have probably heard, you know, if you've heard this, this message before, you would have heard it, you know, are you a Mary or are you a Martha? I heard once someone um, put two, two um, pieces of paper under everyone's chair. I've not done that. Um, one of them said, I'm a Mary. One of them said, I'm a Martha. Um, and basically, the idea is that, you know, if you're a Mary... Mary is kind of the, the people person. She loves being around people. She's the sort of person who drinks gallons of cups of tea. She's always happy to come round. She'll always have you round her house. You know, she lights up the room by being in it because she's the sort of person who you, who you can cry with, you can laugh with, you can go real deep with. Martha's on the other hand, if you're a Martha person, you know, this, is, this is more of a task orientated person. She likes to do stuff. She likes jobs. She likes to get things done. She likes to fix things. This is the sort of person who comes round to your house and probably spends more time fixing things that you haven't got around to doing than sitting on your sofa. You know, this is, this is, we love having this, this, these, these sort of people because they're the sort of people who, 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 fix, you know, who fix, uh, fix things, who, who do some of our DIY, who, who feed us, who help with our paperwork that we don't have a clue what to do with. I'm, I'm not the paperwork stuff, but I tend to a Martha sort of person. Jen is definitely a Mary sort of person. And what Jesus is saying is not that one is good and one is bad. Actually, they are both good. See, Jesus doesn't say, Martha, stop cooking and come and sit down here with your sister. No, what he does is he encourages her to rethink her priorities of what's best to do with the time that she's got. And it's probably not to get stressed at her sister for sitting with Jesus to align her priorities with Jesus. See, so we, we can all think, I can ask you, what's your priorities? 
But the, the problem is that sometimes our priorities don't line up with what Jesus' priorities are. So that's where we need help. So what Jesus is encouraging her to do is to have her priorities line up with him. To line up what his priorities are. So what are your priorities? What's your priorities for your day? What's your priorities for your life? What's your main priorities for getting through every single week? And that won't be the same for everyone. That'll be different. You know, it's not a one size fits all. It varies from person to person, depending on your talents, your gifts, your life stage, your energy, energy levels. But it's, it's really good to kind of think these things out. Even if you don't write them out, it's really good to kind of just, just think, actually, what are my main priorities? You know, for, for me, my, what, I, what I try, what my main priorities are, I'd say, you know, for my non-negotiables, that's the things like, if I can't get anything else done, these are things that I really want. So these are things that I feel like I, I want to be able to achieve. And that's really spending time with Jesus. And that's investing in and spending time with Jen. Everything else, if nothing else happens, then that's okay. Some of you maybe have to have more. Maybe I'll maybe have, have more in that thing. Some of you may have less, whatever. But what, what are your main things? You know, after that, it's really important to, to be able to invest in, to be with the kids, to try and improve my health, to, to spend time with people in growing the kingdom. And then everything else that you can think that I would really love to do or do, I think actually that's just extras. If I get round to it, I get round to it. Now, I'm not saying that's how my life always works, but that's, how I, that's, that's, that's what I'm trying. That's what I'm trying to do. You see, we're not called to be like Mary, okay? Mary gets it right here, but we're not called to be like Mary. We're called to be like Jesus, aren't we? And what we see is actually wonderfully that in, in human form, Jesus faced the same limitations that we did. See, we have to make priorities. We have to make priorities. And sometimes it's, it's a case of choosing between two good things. But we have to do it because time and energy is finite. And what we see what wonderfully is that Jesus gives a wonderful example of this. You see, in Luke chapter 5, it reads this. It says, while Jesus was in one of the towns, a man came along who was covered in le leprosy. When he saw Jesus, he fell his face to the ground and begged him, Lord, if you are willing, can you make me clean? Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him. Then Jesus ordered him, don't tell anyone, but go show yourselves to the priests and offer the sacrifice that Moses commanded for your cleansing as a testimony to them. Yet the news about him spread all the more. So the crowds of people came to, he to hear him and to be healed of their sickness. But Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. See, Jesus, we see here that Jesus knew what it meant to, to, to sacrifice. He knew what it meant to prioritise. You see, and his priority very clearly here was spending time with the Father. That was, that was his non-negotiable. And he, every other good thing had to fit around that. Which meant he had to, he had to sacrifice. He had to sacrifice. And you see, Mary, you go back to like that Mary Martha analogy, if you're, if you're a Mary, you're great with people, you're great at you know, spending time with people, and you go deep with people, but pro what you might find is that you end up sacrificing jobs. You probably have a list of jobs. If you're a married person, you probably have a list of jobs that never, ever, ever get done. You know, there's just stuff piling up that you just don't get around to because that's the sacrifice that you've chosen to do. If you're, if you're a Martha person, maybe, maybe your, your drive to do stuff, to get jobs done, mean that you, you've got a tendency to sacrifice that connection, that going deep with others. You, know, you want to bless people with your skills, but that might prevent you from being able to um, open up and let other people open up to you. Here we see Jesus. See, Jesus, we see, it says he healed someone of leprosy. He, that gave him the opportunity to heal more people. He could have healed even more people. He could have, he could have seen even more people, more people follow him. The people came not just to be healed, people came to listen to him, to hear. But what did he say? He said, I want, I'm going to retreat. 
It says he's retreating away and spending time with the Father. He could have prayed for more people. He could have spent more time with. He could have had more than just the group of 12 that he spent time with. He could have more friends than Mary and Martha. He could have, he could have seen more, countless more people saved. He could have done countless more miracles. But actually his priority was to spend time with the Father. These things were good and he wanted to do them. But if they trumped his, his spending time with the Father, then they had to, to fall by the way. You see, this story, like I said, is about priorities and making the best of the finite time that we've got. You know, it doesn't matter how much energy that you've got, how much, how much it is, how small it is, but the reality is, even the ones, what, those of us who've got the most energy, you feel like they can fill every second of every day, it's still finite. So therefore we have to make choices and, make, and therefore make sacrifices on what we choose to do and don't do. And some of you may be thinking, I feel like I'm always sacrificing. I'm always sacrificing for others. You know, especially, you know, I'd say this, this is Jen, this is people, you know, especially if you've got young kids or people who are dependent on you, you feel like you, you're, you're always sacrificing for others. You're always sacrificing. Like, it's like, where are, I don't feel like I have any priorities because I'm always sacrificing. Let me say it's even more important in that situation to get clear what are your priorities? What are your priorities? And how does what you're choosing to do and what you let go affect that? And sometimes we have to let go really good things and just be, that's okay. That's okay for now because I'm prioritizing these things. That's what God's called me to prioritize. So let me ask you, what are you sacrificing? What do you find yourself sacrificing? And let me say, whether you know that you're doing it or not, you are sacrificing something because you can't do everything. And so is it the right thing? You know, some of us may spend all of our time saying, yes, I'll do that. Yes, I'll help you. Yes, I'll be there for that. And the reality is, you may, you're probably sacrificing your own health, your own um, rest. You know, we've, been, <clears throat> we've been so blessed you know, over the last, last week or so, well, weeks, Actually, you know, people coming out around our house and helping pack and then help people help moving and you know, being, being uh, and help us move in. And, and that's great. And that shows from, from you guys who've done that, that, that shows a real kind of priority to love people, to love us, as <laughs> a matter of fact. But actually, what that also shows is actually to do that, you sacrifice. You know, that like Andrew and Julian and, and, and Ethan to come around our house all yesterday and all the day before. That's great, that shows a priority for us, but actually that's a sacrifice for them. That's a sacrifice, you know, Andrew was just saying how tired she was you know, yesterday. But that's because, you know, they're giving up a Saturday, <clears throat> that's a Saturday of rest rather than, uh, and, but and sacrificing that to help us. And so, what are you sacrificing? And let me ask, is it the right thing? And I can't tell you if that's the right thing or not, but I'm gonna ask you to seek Jesus, let the Holy Spirit speak to you right now. You see, Jesus, like I said, was a busy person. He had so much to do, so much he could have done. He could have, we could, people could look at his life and say, you could have done so much more. You know, what if you didn't go to the cross when you did? What if you went to the cross a few years later? How much more could you have done? If you went to the cross when you were 70, not 33 or whatever, yeah, how much more could you have done, Jesus? Remember, Jesus had his priorities. He had them set and nothing else kind of got in the way. See, Jesus said the most important thing, most important thing was to love God and to love people. And that's how, that's, that's kind of our plumb line. As we start thinking, well, what is the thing? What should I be prioritizing? Holy Spirit, what are you asking me to prioritize? What are you asking me to give up? What are you asking me to take up? Our plumb line is what Jesus said about you know, that our priorities should be to love people and to love God. You see, and when we kind of get confused, when we get mixed up, when we forget that, what happens is we can end up a bit like Martha. You see, if I, you went to Martha and said, Martha, what are your priorities? I'd say, she definitely would say, well, my priority is I want to serve people. I love people. And I, and I love God. I want to serve him. I want to do everything I can for him. But the problem was, in this moment, with her getting stressed and her getting frustrated and her, her being annoyed with her sister and trying to do all these things that were above and beyond what she was meant to be doing, she ends up doing neither. 
She's not really serving God. She's not really serving people because she's kind of forgot. And so what I'm going to ask is, how can we be intentional? We know what we're, we know what God's called us to, we know what God's called us to prioritise. We know therefore sometimes we're going to have to sacrifice things. How can we be, how can we be intentional about what God has asked us to do. You see, Jesus didn't accidentally spend time with the Father. He intentionally withdrew. He intentionally withdrew. That's just one of the reasons why I think that over and over and over again in the Gospels, Jesus is going from one place to the other. Someone asks him to pray for him. He loves people, so he prays for them. They see him in the hills, and he's like, please don't tell anyone. Because... He knows that that means he's got a load of people that he's going to have to hide from at some point because he's going to, he, he wants to, it's, it's so crucial for him to spend time with, 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 with his father. So where can you be intentional about your priorities? And let me rephrase that almost. No. What priorities does Jesus have for you? What priorities is Jesus happy? What, what is he asking you right now? That you might need to lay this down. You might need to sacrifice this for a while. You know, we, we've talked about, you know, let's use, use Martha. You know, there's nothing wrong with wanting to cook the best meal, having a tidy house all the time. But there are stages in life when that's a lot easier and a lot less of a sacrifice than other times. Shigun is nodding. When you have a new baby, those things just go out the window. And you have to kind of think, I'm going to sacrifice having, having, ha- having those things. You know, when, when the kids are grown up or when you don't have kids, okay, we can have everything in order, okay? It's not much of a sacrifice. But if I actually want to leave the house and see other people, there's, uh, there's, they, those things need to be sacrificed. And so what things, therefore, do we need to do to be intentional about that? So we don't, because otherwise we end up in Martha's trap. So Jesus tells us to prioritise him. He tells us to prioritise people. And if we want to be a church that hears God, that enjoys his presence, if we want to be a church that spends time with one another, that leads people to the king of love, we need to be intentional about that. That doesn't just happen. You know, if, if you want to be someone who, just to throw another one out there, if you want to be someone who, who spends time with people, who, who wants to lead people to Jesus, who wants to spend time you know, and pouring into others, we can say that's a great thing, but if we're not intentional, nothing happens. Maybe, maybe a challenge is to say, all right, I'm going to try once every other week to have someone round. If that doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. It's okay. But if we say, oh, I'm going to try. I'm going to try and do that. If it doesn't happen, don't beat yourself up. But maybe, maybe set yourself something. I'm going to try and do this. You see, we, we are a church that says that Jesus is the best, isn't it? Jesus is the absolute best. Jesus is, there's nothing like Jesus. And therefore, we want to spend time with him. And we can find that unless we're intentional about that, we go through days without actually even speaking to him unless we need something. I'm like, please help me. So how can we, how can you, how can I be more intentional about spending time listening to Jesus? See, we believe that, that Jesus is the best thing. There's nothing greater than Jesus and therefore we want others to know him. So how can we do that better? How can we intentionally spend time with others? For them to bump into Jesus through us. I'm going to end it there. And I'm going to leave the Holy Spirit as I pray. Just to, and, I'm going to, as, as, and as I pray, I'm going to encourage you. Seek God. Seek him. And even if you feel like, actually, I'm good. Just lay your life before him again. And say, God, is there anything you want me to lay down? Is there anything you want me to pick up? Listen to him. And let's see what he does. So Lord Jesus, I thank you, God, that there is no one like you. There has never been and there will never be anything, anyone like you. Lord God, and I, oh God, I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would make us a people, us a church, us as individuals, a people who, who have our priorities lined up with you. 
God, that have our priorities lined up with you. Lord Jesus, I pray, God, that we be a people who, who realise how great you are. And therefore, as you desire, Lord God, that we would want to spend time with you. We'd want to, want to spend every day with you. And God, and we would be intentional about that. We'd be intentional about that. Finding some of that, for some of, that, for some of us, that may look like um, time in the morning. When we get up, for some of us, that might just be grabbing a second here or there just to speak to you, to be with you. Lord God, and I pray, Lord Jesus, because you are the best, because no one is like you. Lord Jesus, I pray, God, that you would help us prioritise spending time with others, being with us, meeting with us, introducing others to you, and you'd show us how that we can be intentional about that, Lord Jesus. God, we ask you to search our lives now. Search me, search us. God, and if there's anything that we're doing, that you want us to lay down for a season. Make it clear, speak to us now. Lord God, and if there's things that we're not doing at the moment which you want us to pick up, Lord God, speak to us right now. God, let us be obedient to your voice. Amen. Amen. Amen.